Let's create some modules in Canvas together, taking you from this very blank looking module screen to one that looks like this, taking your students through your course sequentially so it's easy for them to follow and easy for you to organize. I'm gonna start with my practice course. So let's go ahead and go into the practice course. I do have a homepage set up, but the default for Canvas is to have modules set as the homepage. So I'm in that modules tab and it's asking me to create a new module. And I can do this by clicking on the icon but that icon's gonna go away as soon as we create our first module. So we're gonna get used to clicking on the plus sign in this upper right hand corner. Let's click on that plus module button and it's asking me for a module name. I'm gonna call this um, week one and we can change that as we go. We're not gonna worry about locking it right now. Let's add this module. What I really want is for this module to look like the modules that I've got in my completely built courses. If you scroll down a little bit, I wanna show you week two, cause this is a really typical week for the way that I organize my courses. You'll see that I've got my modules organized with these text headers with homework help at the top. And in my courses, we have something to do every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And you'll notice that I've populated my module with homework question videos, a link to our online calculator, videos, homework assignments, and some quick guides. Now, all of these items live in other places in Canvas over on the left-hand side. They actually live in places like assignments, discussions, and quizzes, but that module is a holding place so we can organize those things for the students and they can see them sequentially as we're moving through the course. Stick around until the end because I'm also gonna show you how to add check boxes to the items in your modules, along with some prerequisites that will close modules, making sure students have finished the items that you need them to finish. Okay, so back to our module. I'm gonna start by adding that text header and I'm gonna treat this as a typical week in my course. I'm gonna click that plus button that's in that upper right hand corner. Clicking the plus button, it gives me lots and lots of options. And you'll notice that those assignments, files, quizzes like we were talking about all live here along with some external URLs and external tools. External tools would be like um, a homework app that has been integrated into Canvas for you. An external URL might be like a Google document or a website that you're taking your students to. And then the other things all live along that left-hand side. I'm gonna start though with that text header to organize this module. And I want this one to be homework help. I'm not gonna indent this. I'm gonna spell it correctly though. I'm not gonna indent this. I'm gonna go ahead and add my item. And then I'm gonna organize this like I do with my other classes, but you could absolutely organize this instead of by week. You could call this unit one. And then under unit one, you could have all of your lessons. You can have your videos. You can have your homeworks and then your discussions. So many ways to organize and customize this for the way that you teach. But the way that I do it, I do a homework help and then I also do another text header which is already selected. So I can leave that as text header and then I have something for them that they do on Monday. I'm again not gonna indent, I'm gonna indent the other items. Um, something due on another text header, something due on Wednesday at item and then something that is due on Friday, due Friday. Okay, add item. Now we can absolutely move these text headers around by clicking on this array of dots over here on the left hand side, clicking, holding, and then dragging them to the position that we want. Now you'll also notice that our module right now is not published. See this little circle with the line through it? That means that my module is not published and these items right here are also not published. So the students won't see anything, which might be actually a really great thing. Let's go ahead and add some things now to our module. As I click the plus sign, I wanna add some homework help here. I'm gonna click my plus sign and I wanna add a page. So I'm gonna choose page and it gives me the pages that we've already created. So this might be blank for you. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new page. So create a new page and I'm gonna call this homework help videos. I do want to indent this because I want it to live under the homework help. So it looks really nice and organized for my students. I'm going to indent this one level and then add item. Now it shows up at the bottom. Everything you add shows up at the bottom. So I'm going to grab that array of dots until I get that moving tool, clicking, holding and dragging it up so it lives there under homework help. Now this homework help videos page is completely blank right now. I would open it by clicking it like I did and then edit 
bit to add things to that page. But we really want to populate our module. I'm going to go, if I look at the breadcrumb trail here at the top, I am actually in pages. So I need to go and click the modules tab to get back to where I was. And I do want to leave that site. I didn't make any changes. Okay, so now for under due Monday. I add two things under each of these, and one of them would be a lecture video. So I'm gonna add another page. So I'm gonna add um, page, and I'm looking for a lecture video, and I don't have it created yet. So I could either grab a page that's been created, which is great if you've already built this course, or you can create a new page. And this is going to be my homework. Um, I'll say Monday, no, I'll say unit one A homework video. And then I do want to indent that one level, indent one level, and then add item. Um, that was for Monday. And then I could also add a homework assignment. So I can hit that plus button and I can add an assignment. I can add a discussion board. I'm going to do an assignment and let's do a brand new assignment here. And this is going to be a 1A homework and then indent. So um, you get the idea. I'm gonna indent this one level, one level. So you get the idea. Let me add a few more things so we can talk more about what we've got here in the module. So here's my almost finished module. Remember some of the things that I added don't have any content in them. If you wanna learn how to build assignments, I've got some videos down below for assignments, pages, all the things. Um, but we really wanna publish this module to make sure that students can see it. Right now, only that module one group activity is visible, but because the module is not visible, students cannot see that module one group activity unless you had assignments visible. Now, the way that I've got mine set up is to streamline my course content so students are experiencing all of the course content in a very sequential way organized into my modules. I do not leave the other tabs like assignments and pages open. I don't want students to go there and see them in just one big pile. Instead, I want them to see them organized. Let's publish this module. I also wanna do some editing to it. To publish it, I wanna just click on the circle. If I click on the circle, it gives me a couple of options. So I can publish the module on all the items, which is a great thing to do, but remember some of these are empty. So I might wanna just publish the module only. Let's publish the module only. And then I can go through and individually publish the things I want to publish. So I do want to publish that homework help. And let's say that I did have the videos on there and I could publish this one. Let's say that I'm also ready for Monday's unit one homework video, but I'm not ready for the Wednesday assignment yet. I can also unpublish that module one group activity. If I show this to you quickly in student view, so student view, you'll see that the student can see the module now, but only the ones that I have published. Okay, let's leave student view. I wanna edit that week one. It's not super descriptive. In my course, let me show you here. So in my course, I actually say week, whatever it is, and then what we're covering. So I've got the topic and then I have the date and that helps keep me organized and my students organized. So back to our class, let's change this. I'm gonna click on the three dots located on the far right of that module heading. So clicking on those three dots, you'll notice I've got a lot of options here, but we really just want to edit. So I'm gonna call this um, week one and let's say that we are learning vocabulary. And then I can say week of, I mean, whatever it is, I'll call it like September 10th. I have no idea if that's a Monday. Let's click that lock until button and see what we get. It gives me the option of having this automatically published at a later date. It also gives me some options down below here of adding some requirements. And we're gonna get to that in just a minute. It's a really amazing, useful tool. Let me click save here. Now that I've got this first module created, I would of course wanna create some other modules. I create my modules in the same exact way, in the same exact format. I recommend that you do the same. Online information is so much easier for your students to follow if it's done very consistently. And it doesn't matter if you're following my format here, you might wanna do something like units and then having your information organized differently. So I'm just gonna do um, add module and I'm gonna call this one week two. And that would be week of September 17th, if I'm following things correctly. And then I'm gonna add that module. Now the new modules show up on the bottom. Let me go ahead and just slightly populate this so it looks kind of like the last one.
Now I'm ready to add some content. And I know that I want that same homework help videos page that I've got in the first module. So I'm gonna click the plus button and I wanna add not a text header, I wanna add a page. And it brings up that homework help videos page that I've already created. Remember it's grabbing this from pages. So this is the same exact page, just another place to view it. So I'm gonna click this one and I do want to indent add item. And of course I want it to live here instead. Now I created this other one so I can show you how to move things between modules. I'm not going to populate the whole thing. So let's say that instead I really wanted that module one group activity to be in its due September 22nd. I really wanted that one to be in the following week. So if I hover over that array of dots and get that moving tool, I can click and drag and I can move it not only within the module, but I can move it to a different module as well. I can also collapse and expand these modules. So as I'm going through a quarter and I recommend that my students do the same, if I'm done with a week one module, I click that down arrow to collapse it. If I'm done with a week two module, I click the week two arrow to collapse it. The really nice thing is whenever they enter modules, it will go to the first opened module. Okay, you will notice that we do not have this one um, published. Let's go ahead and publish this one. And I'm just gonna publish module and all items. Now we can also copy items from one course to another. Let's say that I really want this vocabulary one to show up in another course. I can click the three dots. So clicking the three dots, I don't wanna move contents or move module. This is within my course. I wanna copy this module to another course. This is a great thing to do with um, maybe some of your getting started modules. I have one that's called how to get help and I often move that from one course to another course. So I am going to copy to and it says what course do you want to copy this to? I want to copy this one to let's say I want to copy it to my Math 107 class and I'm going to hit copy and then it's going to show up in my Math 107 class. Here's my Math 107 class. This one does default to the modules and there is my week one module. You can also share content that's within your modules or if you're in pages or assignments or whatever. This is such a cool tool, I can't help but share it with you. So if I'm in this module and I wanted to share my welcome video from my Math 107 course, I can go over to the three dots here, not for the whole module, but just for this item. I'm gonna click the three dots and I want to copy it to I was in my practice course, so I want to copy it to my practice course, but wait, it gets better. This is an item, so it wants to know what module do you want that in. I really want that in the week one module, and then it says, where do you want it? And I do want it at the top, and then I click copy, and it's been copied. It will take just a minute or so for it to populate, but let's go back to that course. Okay, and then into module. So we're looking at that first module. Let me expand it. And there's the welcome video right on top. One of my favorite tools. We had talked about moving students through sequentially, but I can do that in a really, really purposeful way, making sure that students are viewing, participating, or completing assignments as they move through before they can see new content. I wanna show you what that looks like in, this is my new faculty academy. I'm gonna go into it, uh, view as a student, which is actually one of my new faculty. So viewing this one as a student, you'll notice this one says complete all items. And for this learning module one, notice how it's grayed out. There's a prerequisite for it. And that's to go to that first module and complete all the items. So as I click on these, I can click on this one to get started. And then I click the next button. I've viewed it, which counts as completing it because of the way I set it up. You can also make sure that they participate. I continue to go through here, clicking next. And then I'm gonna take this survey because I've required this survey as well. And I'm just gonna leave it all blank because I think it will let me do that. And then I'm gonna submit that quiz. Let's go back to modules and see what it looks like now that I've worked through that. Now I got a zero on that quiz, right? But you can set a minimum score on that quiz. Notice I've got a check mark on all items completed. And if I scroll down, now that learning module is visible to me. 
let's do this for our class. So I'm gonna go back to my practice course and I want to set some prerequisites. I really want everyone to watch that welcome video, but you can also set it up so that they look at just certain things or participate in certain things and other things can be optional. So I'm gonna click the three dots. This is module by module. We've got requirements and then we're gonna talk about prerequisites. Let me click on those three dots and I wanna edit this module and I'm gonna add a requirement. I want them to complete all of the items here that I choose, but I'm not gonna require that they go through them in a sequential order. You could click that if you wanted. Now, what I want them to complete is um, the welcome video. I want them to view that. Let me add another requirement. In the drop down menu, it gives me all the content. And the other thing that I wanted them to complete was that homework. And I don't want them to just view the item. I want them to score at least seven out of 10. So I'm gonna grab a score at least, and this is a score of seven out of 10. You can also do the score for a quiz as well. Let's click save, and then let's take a look. Uh, yes, requirements changed. I'm gonna click continue. Let's click that X. We're fine because students have not engaged in the material yet. The other thing that I need to do if I'm gonna require students to do it is to make sure that they can see um, the 1A homework. So let's publish that 1A homework. You'll notice that on due Wednesday, it says 1A homework, 10 points, score at least seven. Let's see what this looks like now in student view. So scrolling up, upper right-hand corner, view as a student. It says complete all of the items. And you'll notice that there are two little dots next to each of these items. If I click as a student on the welcome video, and let's say I've watched it, I've watched it, I've watched it. And then I click next and I go back to modules. It will give me a check mark there. And then I would need to do the same with that 1A homework. Okay, so that's what a requirement is. It gives these green check marks, which is really, really satisfying. There's also a way for students to just mark something as done on their own. Say it's something that they've got to read through and then at the bottom they can mark that as done. Let's leave student view and I want to talk about prerequisites, which is what I had set up in my new faculty course. So for a prerequisite, I'm going to set a prerequisite to get into the week two module. To do that, we go over to edit. So I'm gonna click on those three dots and we want to edit. I'm gonna add a prerequisite that wasn't available in the week one module because that one showed up first. So the week two module has that option. I'm gonna add a prerequisite. And notice that that prerequisite is automatically that first module, which means that they've got to do the requirements. So say that you are only requiring the assignment to be finished before they can get into this module. You would just have that as the requirement and then they could get into this module. Let me hit save so you can see what that looks like. I'm going to hit continue and then let's view as a student. And then it says um, complete all the items and those are the ones that are circled. So you'd wanna explain that to your students. And then this one says week two, your prerequisite is to finish the requirements for the week one module. I'm so glad that you stuck around because I've got some really great tools that go along with modules that most teachers don't know about. I'm gonna start with this view progress. Now I assigned some requirements here. So if I click on view progress and I think I'm the only student in this class, I can look at these students and see how they have done. Let me show you what this looks like in one of my courses. I'm gonna to go to my new faculty academy. I'm gonna to go to view progress. So if I click on view progress here, I'm gonna hide all of those students that you can see. As I click through the students, I can see exactly what they've completed and what they haven't completed. The other great tool, and this is something that I get asked a lot, is how to assign a module to just one or a small group of students. And Canvas has that tool now. Let's go back to our practice class. I'm gonna create a brand new module, and this is gonna be called Co-Requisites. Um, whatever that might be, and I would put some things in it. Now I could populate this, but I want to assign this just to students who didn't score strongly enough on maybe a pre-assessment. And to do that, I'm going to click on the three dots and I am going to choose assign to. And the assign to gives me the ability to assign it to everybody, or I can assign it to just particular students. 
there's only me in this class, but I could choose just individual students to assign this to. Let me go ahead and click on save. I would love to know what else you want to learn about modules or Canvas in general. Put anything down in the comments. Subscribe for more. I've got another video for you here.